I think if COVID-19 has taught us anything is that need to be adaptable. And, you know, a lot of the studies that have come out, uh, one of them that we talk about is one from McKinsey uh, after COVID, but that first kind of quarantine first happened, um, they had done some studies or a study with uh, top economic performers and they looked at how often they were doing certain things. One of those things was how often they're using uh, economic shifts or big market changes to use that as a mechanism to plan more often than annually, quarterly, or monthly. And what they found was that uh, top economic performers were using things like that tool, scenario planning tools, um, more often than monthly to, to uh, look at different ways that they could you know, look at what if scenarios, compare those scenarios, and then choose how they need to move forward. And so I think the timeliness, timeliness of this for customers is important yes. because- Scott, I would, looking say, at, I would say in your go-to-market, this should be your hottest thing. I mean, I'm seeing people, you know, the recovery. I, I've been doing a series of interviews and I've been asking everybody, you see a V shop recovery or a gradual recovery or a W, you know, choppy or an L, dead for a while. Yeah. And I had several people say, you know, it's kind of like a Nike swoosh, but it'll be zigzaggy. Right. And right. not one of them has said it's going to be a shop. Well, a couple of them have said shop recovery, but you know, that was early on. What one told me, which really res resounds with this, is we keep changing our minds every week. Yeah. And, and so scenario planning, especially short-term adjustments have become critical. So you, you really should be pushing this pretty hard in the market. Yeah, well, I appreciate that feedback. I think we've we felt like that was the case and, and uh, for you to say that I think, you know, helps solidify some of our, our thought process of really taking this and creating content around it, whether that be thought leadership or really product specific content around continuous planning, because not only is it timely, but like you said, you know, you have people who say it's going to be a J become a, more of a J curve, or they talk about the hockey stick recovery, whatever that looks like. I think it's nice to be able to have what if scenarios. So what if it is a sharp recovery? What if it's slower? Well, let's look at that and figure out, um, how we can map the right people to the right initiatives and kind of prioritize the most important things and look at the impact on our budget here. So let me ask you this. Let's say yeah. your management team wanted to present to the board and said, let's do all four scenarios, a V, W, uh, U, and L. And I want to show the board, this is what happens if it's a V recovery. Could, these, could you easily extract from this each of the scenarios? and say yeah so impact on so this is resources and budget and yeah that's where i would say um we could come in here this is that comparison view where we would go here's the outlook uh from today with what we have right or whatever other description i want to put in to describe this scenario and I could come and do the same for all these for sake of time. We, you get the idea, but you could definitely come in here and say, this is our V shaped recovery. This is our best case forecast. This is this. And then you can easily come in and see, all right, so here's what's available in this here in scenario two, we're assuming that we're going to get almost an additional 30 head count uh, in, in that we also removed. And that was just to fulfill these nine initiatives um, more fully. And we're not going to address those those outliers in this one. We're going to remain the same, but we're going to decrease by removing some of those just pretty much dropping off and saying we're not going to address these things. And you could kind of go through and see the different nuances off of off of the baseline scenario here. And you can kind of see that as you scroll over. It's all based off of kind of this initial one. Oh, sorry. It's my trackpad is trying to do the two finger refresh on me. Okay. But you can kind of see like on all of these numbers, it kind of shows the up and then down in future iterations uh, that are upcoming as soon as uh, our 2020.4, which is around the November timeframe. The next uh, vision here would be the actual facilitation of operational decision-making. So you go to the board or maybe it's leadership, depending on your approval process, you're evaluating these scenarios and you're going to come in and say, all right, let's go with scenario three. Where do you go from there? And there's going to be actually the option to publish this scenario, at which point 
I'm going to take all those ad hoc initiatives that I just planned and I'm going to push them through to execution by mapping them to uh, live work objects that are going to be refined into more granular plans. But those work objects also can cycle back in. And you can also see that illustrated here that if I wanted to consider in flight, so these may these are all ad hoc initiatives here. But if I wanted to say, let's import some already existing projects to consider in scope and in, in uh, kind of a the aspect of assessing resource and capacity within this plan, uh, I could come in here and I could choose, you know, a few different of these. I could say import these projects. And so what that'll do is that'll pull those in. Even if they started preceding the beginning of my plan, it'll pull in just the remaining portion that go, that breaches over. And then this is actually going to pull in any data that already exists from the project. It looks like this one didn't have any roles or headcounts. This one did. This one pulled in a bunch of already existing roles that were working on that project <clears throat> and their associated capacity. Uh, and some of these don't look like it's requiring the full FTE. We were showing this to a, a customer um, a few months back, and I remember like there was a bunch of people on this virtual Zoom room, and it was a marketing department, and you know started talking about the different ways you can construct scenarios, and they started having this like brainstorming session uh, about their own work, and they're like, "Oh, this would be amazing because we could take this back to our CMO and and show you know well what if we what if we yep. did this these campaigns were all outsourced scenario B they were all in house." But it easily, you know, was basically saying it's an easy way to be able to say, yep, this is going to require more budget, but our teams are going to be freed up to be able yep. to do more. So, you know, being able to have those trade-off discussions about, yeah, that's yeah, it might take a little bit more money if we outsource X, Y, and Z, but our team members yeah. are going to be able to execute on A, B, and C. So it's a pretty interesting way to be able to take those back to an executive, have four or five scenarios side by side, say, look, we've done the work, you know, we're, we're recommending scenario four. And if they have questions, well, why, why are you recommending this? Well, let's dive deeper into it. So I think it's pretty interesting. Just And and I put onto that, I would say, I think that's where when we call out things like operational decision making, I mean, ultimately, a system like this should help people more successfully achieve, you know, successful delivery and, and successful attainment of, of their outcomes. Um, and oftentimes we optimize the process of actually doing work and getting work done. But in my experience and observation, some of the things that hold up the process more than anything is just the inability to make decision, the inability to, to note the decisions that were made and to have that context there. And I think that's kind of the biggest thing that we're seeing with this is that, yes, there's the, there's the push through to execution and the refinement of the more granular that happens downstream. But this is really something to document and centralize the strategic conversation so that you can actually make a unified informed decision to drive that execution. Uh,